Okay, everyone, I'm going to hopefully show you how to put together one of these uh, giant whip finishers uh, as quickly as possible. <clears throat> um, I did a little research, and you can find that from a link in the um, either here on either on a Facebook page, which this video may be playing on, or on my YouTube channel. You can find the link right below the uh, below the video, or on my uh, face or my uh, website at uh, thefrugalflyrotter.com. Uh, do use uh, keyword whip finisher to uh, to find the uh, article. Anyway, uh, here are two whip finishers that are supposed to be large whip finishers that I purchased. One online, uh, which is this one. I got it off of Amazon, <clears throat> and this one I bought at a fly shop. Uh, there's a little bit of differences in them. Uh, mainly the uh, amount of drop that this has to the hook. This one here has a little straighter drop, as you can see it. If I run these uh, handles parallel, you can see the drop is a little bit more in this one than it is in this one. Uh, I think the reason for the more drop here is to give the, uh, the whip finisher more um, clearance around large heads of flies that you might be tying. Um, but but it really doesn't uh, do the job. These are supposed to again supposed to be large whip finishers, and it doesn't do a good enough job for some of the large poppers and streamers um, that that I tie. Now those are uh, typically what you would buy commercially. But what I want to do is show you how to make your own uh, whip finisher, uh, a nice one, uh, very easily by just having uh, some if you can find stainless steel wire. It, the wire is um, the wire is just simply one sixteenth inch uh, stainless steel um, uh, TIG welding wire, and um, you might be able to use just standard TIG welding wire that you might find at a home center store uh, if they have the rods for TIG TIG welders. <clears throat> if not, you might have to find them online, and if, if I can find them. Uh, I'll have links on my website again at the frugalflyrotter.com and you can purchase them from there. I'm not selling anything. I have been considering selling the, um, the large whip finishers, but I would much, much, much rather show you how easy they are to make yourself where you would go to the website and download a pattern and the tools that you need are very simple. Obviously, you would need some side cutters. The side cutters are used to cut this rod in half because it comes in 36 inch lengths uh, and you need just under uh, 16 inches of rod so you have a little bit of a drop on the end by the time you're done with your, with your finisher. Um, then you need a pair of uh, needle no nose pliers. Uh, I like also using flat nose pliers because, I, because of the flat nose I can get a little bit tighter of a uh, radius and that is at the first radius that we bend at the hook of the whip finisher. And then the, uh, the pliers, these needle nose pliers, one of the things that I did, and you can see in a photograph here, you have the, um, the knurled area or uh, serrated area, and that's for gripping um, parts to hold them tighter inside your plier. Um, I took, as you can see in this video, I took um, a Dremel tool and ground off the uh, the uh, serrated and, and knurled uh, teeth that was that was in here. That way, when I go to grip the uh, rod, I'm going to be doing a lot less damage to it. Um, if you're not worried about doing damage, then don't worry about you know taking the um, serrate, the serrated part and the knurled part off. Now, on, however, on flat nose pliers. Um, there's a lot of them that don't that already do not have that um, serration or the knurled area in it. So you can do the whole thing with just a pair of regular flat nose pliers. I like using these to be able to get a little bit more of a rounded um, tight end. This one here is going to give a little bit more of an angular uh, sharp tight end. And, and you'll see that here in a second. The other thing that we're going to need is a... Um, uh, this is a, uh, a, a, a split pin, and a split pin that is, it's, um, it's a 3 16 inch split pin, 
and this one here is a half, uh, one and a half inches long. Uh, the 3 16 split pin for this 1 16 inch rod works out really well. And the, the reason for that split pin <clears throat> is so that you can go in and hold the split pin while you use your pliers to make your bend. When you make the bend, you don't have this over here bending out round on you this split pin will hold the wire in place so that you get a real nice clean straight uh, clean straight bend. Okay, so that's the tools. We got uh, pliers with the uh, knurled and serration ground off pair of uh, flat nose pliers and then we got some side cutters to cut the uh, <clears throat> to cut the uh, the, the uh, rod in half and then also you'll need the side cutters to cut the end uh, on the back side to length. Now this um, is this one. This one here is the first uh, whip finisher that I made, and I made it with um, again the stainless steel rod. Uh, and what I did for my handle was I just at uh, Hobby Lobby I bought a one sixteenth inch uh, inside diameter, uh, which I think is one eighth of an inch. It's just under an eighth of an inch on the tube. And then I used just standard, um, you know, tungsten beads to put on the uh, the shaft of this rod to, to uh, have a uh, rot a place where the uh, the wire can rotate in it and the, the uh, beads keep it from slipping back and forth. It holds it in place. Um, but the, the, this one here wasn't really quite big enough to get around the head of the extra large double barrel poppers that I'll tie sometimes and some of the um, the, the uh, flies that I call a popper streamer that I make and I'll do another video on that it's where I make these large uh, blank tubes um, from stacked five millimeter uh, craft foam to, to be able to get the, a very nice large uh, diameter tube right there now on the last one, the one that works best for me and to get the reach, uh, we're again still at the 1 16th inch um, stainless steel rod. But what I did in place of this tube, this little skinny tube, I have something now that I've got a lot better grip on. Now if you have a wood lathe, and I do, and I'll, I actually have one, but I did. this is a pin that I turned a long time ago. And I'm going to get into the anatomy of, uh, of the uh, slimline pin here in a second. This is all important to know uh, in your, you know, in, in your quest to making your own uh, whip finisher if you decide to do so. Um, but what I did was I took the pin apart, and I'll show you here in a second the parts that I took that I did take apart, and then I'll show you the assembly at the end of um, of this video, so that you can end up having something either like this or like this without the wood. And I can tell you right now, I actually like this. This, this is fine. Uh, I don't think you actually have to have the, the wood unless you, you know, unless you want it. It's not a, fu a, a real functional thing. It might help a little bit on your grip or something. I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to get into that. That's a matter of uh, preference. But as, fu as far as functionality goes, I do believe you need the, uh, larger, um, the, the larger grip with the larger um, the uh, larger finisher. So now going on to the um, slimline pin, this is a complete kit. And this part here of the kit is, is the only part that you're really going to need. You're, you're going to have the tip of the pin. This is the tip. And then this right here is the uh, cap that goes on the back of the, um, you know, of the pin. It would be like this. This this would be the tip, and this is the cap that caps everything off. Um, I could have picked this one up, I guess. And then you have your two barrels that get that get pressed onto the tip and onto the cap. The parts that you're not going to need are this little ring and the uh, and the clip, the uh, pocket clip for the pen. You can throw that away. You're not you're not you're not going to need it. Um, the other parts that you have on the uh, on the pen is this twist mechanism, and what it's for is when you press this into into place. Usually, you take it only up to that part right there, where that little ring is. You take you bury it there. 
then this pin will rotate, or not the pin, the mechanism rotates, and when it rotates, it's got um, threads in there that causes the tip of your pin to move in and out of the tip of your, of this tip here. Okay, um, so with that being said, uh, I'm going to take, I'm also going to be throwing this away, except I need this piece right here. And again, you'll see why. You, just, you can take that off and, and throw your pen away. You're, you're not going to need it. So you have these parts here. Let's go ahead and take this out of the, out of the bag. <clears throat> these, these are your parts here. And what I use, I guess I didn't go over the, all the tools. I've got a... Um, an Irwin quick grip right here and that all that's used for is to put the uh, pen parts together and you just sit whoops I don't want to do that first don't put this on first you want to put the tip the tip on first because it's got a positive stop on it it's only going to go in so far if you put the mechanism on first when you put it in you think you have it in place and then when you go to press the tip in it's going to cause this to go in even even further you you really don't want that so put the tip on first and it's just a simple matter of taking your uh your Irwin grip and then what you'll see this gap close up here when you when you hit the when you close it together okay that's done right there then you go to this part here and again you put the um brass to brass then you put it inside your clamp again and then run it in just like that okay then you will take your end cap and your other uh, piece of brass and then you'll run that together just like that and then this piece here that we took off of the uh, of the ink tube and threw the ink tube away. We needed this because if we didn't have this, here I need to cut these. One of the things with the um, rods is they come from the manufacturer that makes the rods. They stamp them and they've got this flat part on here. If you have the flat part, it's not going to make it through your um, through your tube. So I go ahead and cut those off. Might as well do this other one too. I think we're only going to do one here, but I'm going to cut both of them and get them ready for. For making another one if I want to. Okay, so what's going to happen is you're going to, once this is all assembled or bent here in, into form, you're going to slide this in. Okay, but now you, you it, it's, it's real sloppy and um, you, you don't have a place to bend it to lock it into place. So when you put this piece on, right here, and you twist it into place. Now, once your bends are done and you get it right up to the corner of your bend here, and you have your hand and have a hold of it, you're going to take your pliers and put a real tight bend, just like this, right here, and that bend is going to keep it from sliding off, but it allows it to rotate nicely. So that's that's the way the handle is made using a slimline pin kit um, that usually is used for turning on a lathe. So now we've got this part here, and it's ready to go for the pin. Let's go ahead and get started making our bends. Now, to make the bends, I've got this free PDF on my website at thefrugalflyrotter.com. Again, if you just go to the website, you can use the search function and put in whip finisher and it should take you to that, uh, to that article. So what I'm going to want to do to get all my bends. Now, one of the th if you look closely here, these two whip finishers are completely different, really. I mean, this one's got a more narrow uh, turn uh, and then this one does. This one's got more a, a closer uh, gap here. Uh, to this part of the rod than this one does. Um, this, this one's got a little bit more of a curve on it 
than this one does. Um, all of that is really not as important as just getting your uh, pattern as close as you can to the printed pattern. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. And the way I try to get it uh, as close as possible to the pattern, I have uh, a, a red sharpie and I'll put a, a mark right where I want to make my first bend. Don't worry about making the other marks yet. You make the first mark, you grab your, um, your split pin, you put it inside there, and then then grab it, grab your uh, pliers. Actually, let's get the pliers first. Put it right there and there, and then we're going to make our first bend. You might need to move them down. Make your first bend up here, and then when it hits, you know, perpendicular or a 90 degree angle there, then you can come down to this more detailed area, get, get a good grip on it and then pull it the rest of the way down. And you take a look at it and you see you might need a little bit more. Just go ahead and put a little bit more in it until you get it to where you like it. Um, just like that. And if you do a little bit of a damage to your tip, just straighten it back up again with your flat nose uh, pliers. Just like that. Okay, now that we've got that, in there. Okay, now we want to get ready to do our next bend. And we mark mark the spot. Just like that. Again, we take our split pin. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to keep in mind when you're when you're doing it this way is when you make your bends, you don't want your split pin on the inside of your bend or you're not going to get it you're not going to get it off. So what you want to do is make sure the, uh, the bend is over here. You're going to want to um, make sure that you, this first bend is going to be at a 90 degree angle to your pliers, like so. <clears throat> and then you're, you'll go ahead and, and make, your, uh, make your bend and take a look at it. Right like that, put it on. It looks like we still need to do more of a bend there. So we'll just go ahead and, and do that. Go ahead and grab it and bend a little bit more. Might take a couple times, but that's okay. Okay, we, we're doing pretty good here. So you've got that much of it done. Now you come over and you mark your uh, your next bend. And again, mark these bends as you go. Don't mark them up all at once because if you do, um, it's you're not going to have. Um, you, you'll find that your your bends are going to move on you. Okay, so grab it and make sure that you have it straight by loosening up on the plier and try and get this as, as straight as possible and then straight as possible like that then go ahead and put your split pin back on and make your other bend now what this bend here is going to be parallel to this one out here so you just go ahead and make the bend just keep an eye on it and it looks like we did pretty good right there right on the beginning uh, right on the first bend so we got that now we'll go ahead and mark the next bend up And this is where it's not super important here, but it actually is, is uh, because what you're going to want to do is you want this as close to the top as you can get it, but, but to still have a good round bend there. Uh, so let's see if we can do that. Let's see, what are we doing here? Right at the top, so we're good there, put our plier right on the line there and then take our actually you know what um, I'm going to use these pliers because they got a little bit of a rounded edge, edge on there I don't know if that's going to help me or not but I'm gonna, this is the first time I've used these 
I did that so that you could see that you could take a you, to get this flat edge here. If you got a Dremel, you can flatten it out. But um, let's go ahead and see what happens here using these things here. I'm going to make a bend, but because this has got such a wider bend, as I bend, I'm going to get, make the bend and then push it in, make a bend, push it in, make a bend, push it in, and go like that. That way, I've got a really nice curve here instead of these real sharp, well, that one doesn't because we didn't close it up. This is closed up. This is still open. Uh, so there we go. All right. So now that we've got that about where we want it, what I want to do is mark where I'm wanting that to, to drop. Um, so let's go ahead and, and do that. Let's stay on these. And we'll grab it right, right there again. And again, you want to try and keep this thing bent, bending so that it's um, so that the wire is staying perfectly in line. Okay. Okay, that's not that's not bad there okay so now actually we're going to do a little bit different than what we've been doing and then that is to make a point on the next bend here we don't want to close this all the way up yet we don't want to close it up and you can see that this is out of alignment we're going to fix that here in a few minutes um, this is the only time that you would do this to this uh, to, to the bending section here because what we're going to want to do now is we want this to shoot back out in this direction here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, and grab it like so, put our split pin on, and then we're going to pull it, pull it back out again. Okay. Um, now that we have that right there like that, we can go ahead and and just real tightly pull grab a hold of it and try to keep this from try not to bend that in there too much just like that now we want to uh, put our bend in to bring it down straight We got that. Now you can see where we're um, where we're right here. We need to get the um, this bend to go at a 90 out that way, and then we're just about done with it. So let's go ahead and get ready to do that. Go ahead and put this on here. Grab it again right here. Put it on and make make your bend. That looks pretty darn good. Okay, so now to straighten this up, all we need to do is take our pliers and twist up, lay it down and find out where your high spots are. So this, this is a high spot here. You'll take it and turn it up. And turn it up. And just play around with it until you get it. Okay, we got it. We're done with the bending part. That's that's it on the bending part. Now all we need to do is finish it up by putting our uh, pin on, and that's a simple matter of running it through the tip, getting it through the plastic part there, grabbing your pliers. Remember what I said? Grab it on here so you can push push it up in there. Grab your pliers, give it a bend. Take your side cutters, cut it off, take your end cap, 
put it on and there you go you got yourself a nice uh, a nice whip finisher now these uh, these red marks one of the things I don't have it uh, right in front of me here but I just use little um, uh, alcohol wipes and it takes it off and then you're you're good to go that, that was easy wasn't it um, anyway I've got some more things that I'm working on uh, that I want to uh, to share with you one of them is a, is a um, very very secure stabilizer for my canoe so I can stand up and, and, and I can stand up on my canoe but I want to be able to stand up and set a hook recklessly set a hook and not worry about the, t the canoe uh, tipping over that's why I'm going to make these uh, stabilizers. Now the stabilizers I'm making, they actually go on the canoe, out, and then down into the water. And when you're ready to move again, it's just got a couple of knobs. You raise it up like this, tight. You raise it up so it's just straight out, maybe a little bit high. Lock it into place, and that's got a pin. And you can run them forward, and it'll have a pin to lock it in place. So I'll have the the uh, stabilizers that'll run like this until I'm ready to put them out and then it'll go out like this and then down into the water and everything locks into place. Um, that That's on something else. But, uh, and then there's a few other things. I mean, the, one of the things I've always liked to do is innovate um, and just make my own stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I don't really plan on making and selling these things. I, I might, I don't know, I, I might sell a couple, but I can tell you right now if I sell them, um, they're not going to be super cheap. Uh, I don't really know what kind of a price I'm going to put on it yet. I would really much rather show you how you can make them yourself. Again, it's easy. A split pen and a pair of pliers. And that's really, and slide, side cutters, obviously. And then the only thing that you might have a little bit of an issue finding is some of this 1 8 inch stainless steel uh, rod. And then you'll have to order uh, this slimline pen, which I'll have a link to on my website. Um, and, and, and you're done. I mean, it's, it's a real simple, simple tool, and the thing works awesome. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and use the one we just made with the red marks on it still. We'll take some red thread, and this is the one I've been using as a demo. <clears throat> but uh, it's a simple thing to use, and if, to really get back on the back side of those, this is the one we just made, and look at that. All day long all day long this thing works like a charm just like that so if you like what I just did here and if I helped you out please consider subscribing to my channel I've got more stuff on the way uh, I do have some fishing videos I hope to have as well uh, with my son and I out on the water uh, this is his real first year of getting out there we're gonna see what we can do with that um, but uh, other than that, this is Mike. Until the next video, we'll catch you later.